Next up is George Clooney's Batman, that is from Batman and Robin. Uh, again, considered to be a um, the bane of the uh, the Batman franchise, uh, and not in the the bane that we like as far as being an awesome villain that broke Batman's back. But um, again, uh, for me, there is a purpose to Batman and Robin, and in, in terms of it led to decision making based on its commercial and critical failure that Batman movies had to be done differently. And that is when, uh, after time, uh, Christopher Nolan took over uh, the franchise and made the um, the Dark Knight series and then so on and so forth that you had more darker Batman movies. But this figure, um, it's not as glossy as the Batman Forever figure, uh, nor should it be. Um, there's something off about the figure. I don't remember the, the, uh, the Batman suit being this dark uh but of course the the textures appear to be all in order with how the the suit looked um uh, again I, I don't remember the suit being this dark that you can't even um uh, necessarily there's you can see plenty of the textures there especially if you get in the right lighting uh, in terms of seeing the the, uh, the belt buckle so again, a, a good looking figure. This is probably my second favorite in just the, the aspect of being a more rare figure. Um, the likeness to the chin is more softer than Kilmer's, but in the right lighting, you can tell that is Clooney's chin. Um, so definitely a, a good touch on the figure. Um, I just wish that the, uh, and uh, this could simply be um, me not being familiar with the actual text of the actual color of the suit, but I just don't remember it being this dark or the ears being that high, especially. But otherwise, the, the figure looks great. It's such a rarity to get a George Clooney uh, Batman and Robin figure because there's such a hate for the film and probably not a strong hunger for this toy. Um, but I think it looks great. It is my second favorite of the collection. So, um, otherwise, I did want to point out a couple things. Uh, the logo is raised on the chest, that more so than any of the other figures. And there's little touches that you'll see that you wouldn't recognize otherwise. Um, he's got bat signals on his uh, boots. So that's pretty neat in terms of something I would never have uh, recognized in the movie. And I'm assuming that they went through the process of getting the actual pictures of the suit so they can make sure all the details were put in there. And of course, plenty of the abs and muscles put in there throughout the body. So neat figure, guys. The George Clooney, Batman and Robin figure. Second favorite of the series of these figures with, of course, uh, Val Kilmer figure being my favorite. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, next up is Christian Bale's Batman from the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, I believe this is more representative of the Dark Knight as opposed to his suit uh, that he had in the first film, Batman Begins, because this looks like it's the costume where the head can turn. Now, this is actually my least favorite of the collection. Uh, the reason being that um, the cape is so separated from the rest of the body, I guess to give more of an armor look to the um the shoulder pads um that it feels like it's like cheaply glued and there's this big gap there that you wouldn't otherwise see in the movie you can try to do your best to to cover it up but it's still very noticeable another big issue that you'll probably not see in the video is that, and you may not be able to tell so much in the video, but it's more and more noticeable in person, is that my figure has a lot more of a cross-eyed look to him. Um, so that's a problem, that uh, this should be a high premium figure, um, and it looks like he's cross-eyed, uh, or at least the blotch uh, for his eye um, is a lot bigger, in terms of the pupils a lot bigger on one eye than the other, and it makes it look like he's off. Uh, another big issue that I have with this figure is that uh, you may not, again, be able to tell in the video, is that the colors of the figure seem very washed out. Um, so uh, honestly, uh, I prefer, I have the Mattel versions of these figures 
and I actually prefer even the Mattel version uh, over this one. And I know people love this figure. It's been selling out all over the place in terms of when McFarlane released the, the Dark Knight figures. But I'm not a big fan of this mold. Uh, I think that otherwise it looks uh, highly textured. This is more of a uh, realistic approach with Nolan in terms of being an armored uh, bodysuit, more of a tactical purpose to it. Um, you got the uh, uh, um, the bat signal on the chest, and then you've got the more subtle one on the utility belt. And again, it's all armored throughout. Um, and then you can even tell it right down to the boot that there's textures in terms of the changing of colors. But the gray is just so washed out um, that it puts it off for me. And again, the armored look goes all the way up to the neck. Uh, and um, I think the neck looks... Uh, kind of off in certain ways, at least to the head proportion uh, with this mold that uh, you have to kind of get into certain poses so that it doesn't look so weird, um, so that the neck doesn't seem separated from the body. I just don't like this mold so much. But anyway, guys, it's still a good figure, just not the, my favorite. And if I was given a choice to display one figure uh, that was representative of the Dark Knight series, I'd actually just choose the Mattel figures that I have. But I mean, in terms of the the chin, uh, pretty good likeness of uh, Christian Bale overall. Uh, but again, all these are kind of uh, soft likenesses. So this one is my least favorite of the series. Do want to point out that he's got the, uh, when you can change out the different kind of bat signals, uh, the, the, uh, the kind of the stamps on these plastics uh, between the films. So right there, you've got uh, the the Nolan, the uh, the Dark Knight uh, bat symbol right there. So on to the next figure. Okay, so the next figure we have is Ben Affleck's Batman from Batman vs. Superman from uh, uh, Justice League. This is Zack Snyder's interpretation of Batman. And while this was released in terms of part of the mold for um, the most recent Zack Snyder's Justice League when McFarlane started releasing uh, this figure, um, the head mold is completely different. And I believe the, the colorations are a bit improved as well. I do appreciate the head sculpt. The figure is bulkier in terms of the midsection than the other figures because Ben Affleck uh, was a big guy and still is a big guy, uh, but he was he was a big bulky Batman and his ears are smaller. So, uh, And then the big, big bat signal that's representative uh, more like Frank Miller's Batman, uh, really gives this a more distinct look. Um, now with the, the head sculpt, I do appreciate that they've done new head sculpt on this. As you can see there, um, there is improvement over the previous release of the Ben Affleck Batman toy that they had. The profound butt chin that Ben Affleck has with the previous release was more of just like a, a small pinch, but this is like a full like cleft chin. Uh, so I do feel that that is an improvement. The likeness is a bit lost with the coloration of the mouth. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, I do enjoy this figure. Um, I think that it has a distinct look over some of the others because of the technical nature uh, of the suit. Um, and just the bulkiness of it. Uh, of course, with the, the heavy gauntlets there that you see on the side, I think this is uh, pretty much a distinct look of what he had. Um... Uh, with his uh, towards the end of the film uh, where they're going against um, uh, dark sides minions uh, in terms of the parademons and stuff like that in the uh, abandoned radioactive plant um, but uh, of course this doesn't have the visor and I do like that the visor is not there uh, that in the previous release he had the visor either on his eyes or just above just resting on the cowl um, so I'm glad that's not there <laughs> Um, also, I'd like to point out that there's like heavy weathering to the bodysuit. Uh, I think that all adds to just being a really uh, great representation of um, Zack Snyder's version of Batman. So very cool. Uh, I do feel that he also stands a bit more. Uh, maybe that's because there's more plastic in the body uh, in terms of the proportions. But I think that this figure works well. Um, so definitely enjoy this one. So with that, let's go on to the next figure. Uh, before I go on to the next figure, I do want to point out that since these are stamps on the, uh, the uh, on this like piece of plastic here, uh, some of the stamps uh, come off better than others. This one, straight out of the packaging, is a bit spotty as if the stamp didn't connect all together. So unfortunately, this one uh, has a bit of a manufacturing defect in terms of it's got spots on the stamp. But just wanted to point that out. On to the next figure.
So with our final Batman, we have the most realistic Batman interpretation to date. That is Robert Pattinson's Batman uh, from director Matt Reeves. As you can see with the visor, it gives more of that, uh, or should I say the bat signal. Uh, again, we're looking for a more realistic look to the Batman, and that was interpreted in the bat signal in that film. But uh, in terms of this sculpt, uh, I think it's a good figure. Uh, not all of McFarlane's The Batman figures uh, were great. Uh, the unmasked figure looked terrible for Rob Pattinson, even though they had his likeness. He looked like he was made out of Play-Doh, but the, the cowled uh, version looks perfectly fine. I know that Bruce Wayne is especially pale in that movie because Rob Pattinson just stays indoors all day. And that's something that uh, you can see in the figure itself. So I always thought this was a good uh, a nicely designed bat figure. Once again, more tactical in design. It's not a straight bat on his chest because this is pretty much a more tactical approach, a more realistic approach. He's got a more tactical utility belt. Of course, there's the, the gauntlets that have more of like uh, little pieces of equipment there. Um, and it's like a soft rubbery uh, pieces here in terms of kind of the, the pieces of the gauntlet to be able to like jab. Um, the Shoulder pads are very profound, and they're actually a, a light rubber as well. There's what's underneath, uh, but I'm not going to pull them off. Um, but I think this is a good interpretation of the character. I think he poses really awesome, more so than even some of the others, just off the bat. Um, and I think that's really a, a, something special about this figure. Um, something I'd like to point out is that this is really a peg warmer. Like you can find them, dozens of these in stores. I don't know if this is any different than when they released the Batman figure line, uh, but there's tons of these in stores at discounted prices. So this is probably the least excitable figure of the bunch, but not necessarily the worst as I pointed out. So that is Rob Pattinson's The Batman. Otherwise, guys, I'll point out that it comes with trading cards. Uh, last but not least, I'll speak more specifically to the pros and cons of this bat signal. It's very cool in terms of it has these gargoyles. It comes in two pieces out of the box with the, the bat signal and the uh, the base stand. It is textured, it is weathered. It feels like it's made out of, uh, or try to get the look of a weathered uh, piece of metal or steel. Um, and of course, you can turn it on or off with the switch on the back. Um, my negative for that for this is that it's very clunky and awkward to pull this piece out and replace out these little glass pieces as if you're um, changing uh, the glass of a telescope. It feels like you're going to break the thing. Um, so that is my big negative there. I wish that there was just a way that you could like do a slider and just slide between the different uh, pieces of, uh, of the um, the bat signal as opposed to popping this out, putting in a new glass in, uh, like so that you just pop this out, put this piece of glass in, or this piece of plastic in, and then uh, put this uh, top piece back on. It just feels awkward. It feels like you're gonna break it. But that does it for the collection. Guys, that is the entire Batman Ultimate Collection of figures from McFarlane. Uh, the posability is not going to be amazing with these, but you can still get, as you can see there, some interesting poses. I would recommend um, getting some of the kind of like the uh, translucent arms that you can hook up your figures to so you can get them in more of a gliding type of stance like I have Michael Keaton back there. Um, you will need some type of stand for them to be on, otherwise they're just not gonna stand on their own given some of the proportions of each figure. Uh, being at a price point of $119, I would not, or $120, I would not spend uh, more than that, or at least not so much more than that, because you get with your pay, what you pay for the packaging in terms of taking them out of the packaging. It's just basic, uh, cheap plastic. Uh, and uh, cardboard. It's not necessarily a high quality package, even though it looks like a high quality package, you'll see yourself kind of just break into the plastic to get to these figures. Um, and of course the figures themselves, uh, you'll have some paint blotches and things of that nature on the figures in terms of some of the, the, the skin uh, for the, um, the chins and the, the lips will start kind of scuffing on the figures as you'll see when you pull them out of the package that uh, quality control is not the best on some of these. So again, you get what you pay for. Each one of these figures individually would probably be about 20 bucks. So together it kind of makes the price point the, 
the box isn't so great um, and but it is kind of nice to have that bat signal so there you have it guys please like and subscribe and i will see you guys at the bat cave bye